Hi, I'm Teresa with Inflectra. I'll be providing a series of short videos to help you get started using Spira. This includes all the additions of the system, Spira Test, Spira Team, and Spira Plan. In this video, we'll take a look at reporting. So let's get started. The Spira Suite was designed so that you can easily find real-time results for products and programs. Let's take a look at Spira Team's offerings. Artifact list pages provide an at-a-glance update for specific artifact progress, and their filtering options let you save specific views so that you can easily pinpoint key progress indicators. Here on our requirements list page, we can easily see both the testing and task progress for the individual requirements. We can then use our saved filters here to the side um, to take a look at any requirements that are critical and not yet covered with testing. Or we could shift our focus instead and look at any sort of late starting tasks. And you can see now with this view, we've added a couple of extra columns here for task overall effort as well as remaining effort. Another built-in reporting feature are the product and program dashboards. To access the product dashboard, we'll click on this hexagon here in the top left. With the general development and testing views, stakeholders can review high-level progress or target specific areas of interest. Let's take a look at the testing view first. Here we have a widget that lets us quickly assess our requirements coverage. We can see the, the count of requirements not currently covered with testing, and then the progress of the tests uh, run and gets requirements as well. Here to the side, we can get a, uh, an idea of our test uh, case trends, as well as uh, by release. And we can look at some incident information as well, including the open count, as well as the priority distribution for the individual incidents. We can easily filter these dashboards for a specific release or sprint if we want to only concentrate on information that's pertinent to perhaps the uh, next uh, release. If we move now to the development view, here we see a widget that gives us some information on the recent builds. That works if Spira is linked to a CI tool like Jenkins or TeamCity. Spire team also lets you link to source code management tools like Git or Subversion. So if linked here, you can see uh, the different branches and recent commits for those branches. Also available on this dev view are uh, widgets that highlight those uh, the task progress. So we have late finishing tasks, late starting tasks highlighted here. And then we have some graphs that give you um, the burn down velocity or burn up views for requirements and tasks. Moving then to the general view, here we can see our overall requirement completion for all the active releases or sprints within the product. We can see the relative size of releases and sprints and then where they are on the schedule. Here you can see that this uh, uh, sample data is is in the past, and so uh, we're showing red here because those those releases are overdue. And then we have the requirements completion uh, stats for those individual releases as well. We can change that display um, from percentages uh, to numbers. Uh, the tool tips here on the widgets are really helpful to give you some additional information um, as you hover over different um, areas of the of the widget. And then down below, you can see we have a Gantt view. So you can look at the schedule for individual releases and sprints. And we have that highlighted bar there to indicate the percent completion uh, of those requirements. Individual users can modify the layout uh, for these dashboards. So both the widgets that are included in the different views, as well as where they appear on the page. If we go up one level, to the program, you can see that um, the button here indicates uh, that we are at the program level. We have a, cr a cluster of hexagons now. And we have those same views, general, general development and testing, but now we're looking at an aggregate for the, all the products within this particular program. Some key widgets to point out would be this product test summary. So you can see the, the test uh, testing progress for all the different products within the program. And then on the general view, 
you can see your uh, requirements coverage and then the breakdown by product. And you have the, the overall schedule for all the products within your, pro uh, within your program. And that shading bar uh, also includes uh, the percent completion. Okay, great. Let's go back now to our product. So I can show you the more um, robust uh, and powerful reporting options that we have for products. To access those, we'll click on this reporting button here in the top nav bar. In our report center here, we have a, both a collection of customizable graphing widgets, as well as um, some printable uh, preloaded reports over here to the left. Let's take a look first at some of the uh, graphing widget options. Um, so here you can see we can have defect counts over time as well as test re results graphed over time. And we have selectable date ranges for each of those graphs. We also have some snapshot graphs for, um, and they let you select what information you'd like to display. So for instance, here in our requirement summary, we're displaying uh, requirement status and we're grouping by release. Um, perhaps we wanted to change that to look by importance. And you can see that the graph updates uh, with that new selection. Spira lets you export the CSV file for the uh, data in that graph. Um, or if it's your preference, uh, you can just export a picture of the graph as well. Spira supports custom graphing as well, so you can create those custom graphs. And then depending on the data set, um, you can choose the view there. So we have a donut option, a bar chart, or line graph. The report center is also uh, filterable by release or sprint. Now let's take a look at uh, some of the preloaded reports. You, know, you can see over here to the side that those reports are or organized by artifact. Um, in addition, you can customize uh, these reports if you'd like, um, whether that's just um, an altered header or footer uh, or more extensively using XSLT. If we take a look at our requirements traceability report, you see that you can select the desired format of the report and then you can filter um, by the different uh, standard and custom properties for a more targeted report. Spira lets you save these uh, filter selections. You can name that report and it will appear here in your uh, left sidebar there. Um, you also have the option to have Spira save that report to the document repository. And that's great if you wanna use Spira's built-in document workflow um, to uh, get some approvals on a, a report. Perhaps uh, you would run a report at the end of a release cycle um, and then uh, run it through the document workflow to get approvals or sign-offs. For more information about the different uh, pre-built reports we have, you can re refer to Spiradocs here, and then you'll see a quick summary of, of the different um, reports that we have. So I hope you have a good idea of the, of the several ways that Spira team lets you review and analyze essential project metrics. Thanks so much for watching this Spira video. We have more explainer videos online, so check them out now.